Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples of classifiers. Um, and these are general classifiers, huh? so nothing specific to single cells uh, so far. Uh, one of the most famous ones are called nearest neighbor classifiers. Um, so what do you do with a nearest neighbor? You take your whole data set, right? So this is the, the training data is the blue and red dots over here. Um, and then when you get a new sample, the yellow one, you basically find the closest example to it or the closest set of examples. So in this case, if we take one neighbor, so one nearest neighbor classifier, for the yellow one, I look at the nearest neighbor, I find this red dot over here, then I know that the yellow um, circle over here has to be red. So my predicted label for it is red. And the same goes over here. So if I have a, a, a yellow dot over here, then I look at the nearest neighbor, it's this one, so it has to be blue. Yeah. And this is an example of one nearest neighbor. You can also say, okay, I'm gonna look at the two nearest neighbors and then take the majority vote or the average. I can look at the five nearest neighbors. I can look at the 10 nearest neighbors and so on. Yeah. These are called instance-based uh, learning or lazy classifiers because you actually, you're not learning anything, right? I told you earlier that you're trying to learn a description for this boundary. In this case, you're actually not learning this by heart. So there is no function to describe the boundary at all. Yeah. Um, to, to have these nearest neighbor classifiers, there are four things that you need to define. So you need a distance matrix. So how do I measure the distance between this point and the other points, right? Um, how many neighbors to look at? So you can take one, you can take two, you can take 10, you can take 30. We'll talk about the weighing function in a second. Um, and how do you make your decision? So do you take the majority of the vote? Do you take the average of the vote? Uh, you, you do need to make a choice here, huh? some, some choice. So with k nearest neighbor, we, we often use an Euclidean distance because it's, it's easy to calculate, it's, it's fast. Um, k is a choice that you really have to make. Um, I think in, in single cell experiments, there's always, I don't know, a k of 30 or 50. No, no explanation given. I think the, the easiest way to do this is to scan a range of K and then determine what works best for you. But there's really no uh, uh, fun, uh, easy way to, uh, to do this. Um, the weighing function is not very often used. I will show you an example on how it's used. Um, and then you can predict just the average. So if you take 30 neighbors, what is the average vote out of my 30 neighbors? Okay. I hope this is uh, easy to, uh, to, uh, to explain. Okay. The, the, the choice of K, does yes. it matter how small clusters you have? Uh, Indeed, yeah, it does. So, so a very easy way, if you know about cross-validation, uh, you can also optimize this K. So you can take part of your data and then say, okay, what is the best K that would work for me in the sense that uh, it will give you the highest performance? And if that, if then you say, okay, I came up with K equal, I try multiple values of K and then K equals 50 works the best. Then that is the actual value that you would use for the classifier later on. Yeah, and it, it does depend on the size of the classifier. The only uh, problem here is that you have one K for the whole classifier. So if you have two classes and one is a lot smaller than the other, then this fixed K usually gives you a bit of problem. So yeah, these unbalanced class, uh, classes are problematic. Okay, um, so let's look at the effect of K actually. So if this is our data, and in this case, we have three classes. So we have, uh, I apologize for the printer. My, my, my daughter is probably doing her uh, schoolwork. Um, so if we have green, red, and blue uh, classes, if we take one nearest neighbor classifier, these are kind of the boundaries that you will get. Right, that um, you, you define them based on what would be, if, if a point ends up here, what is the, the, the label that it will receive? And it's probably gonna be blue because the closest distance here would be to blue. If you increase the K to five, what you see here is that there are these white patches, right? And that means that we are for some points not really sure about the, 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 uh, the boundary or it becomes really tight. So for this, this green one, um, uh, it's, it's very difficult to determine the boundary because the five nearest neighbors are really all mixed of different labels, yeah? Um, so the, the higher the K, 
the the basically more uh, confusing some of these points will be to to uh, to determine. So one trick to go about this is to do, to use these weighted nearest neighbors, um, and this is called sometimes the kernel regression. So every the, the distance is the same as before, so we just calculate Euclidean distances. Um, how many neighbors? So we don't specify now. There is no k. So we just look at all the data points that we have. Um, but then we weigh them. So points that are so so uh, this is a function where x is uh, every data point that we have, every cell, and q is the cell that we want to classify. And then you weigh the points that are very close to you with a very high weight, and the points that are far away with a very low weight. Right. So now you don't have to specify. I'm looking at 30 neighbors. No, I'm looking at everything. But if you're very close to me, then you get a high weight. If you're far away, you get a very low weight. Yeah. Um, you can, you know, determine this weight easily based on the distance. So this is just the distance between every point and your query point, and then you divide it by a kernel. So a kernel is just the width of this Gaussian. So if you have a very narrow kernel, then the points near to you will get a very high weight and, and quickly this weight will drop. If you have a very width wide kernel, that means that even far away points, far away points will have a, a, an influence on you as well. Yeah. Um, and again, with the decision, you again make a, a, a like a weighted decision. So the label of a point that's close to me is high, the weight of a label uh, a point that's far away is, is low. Yeah. Um, I will point out later to which classifiers from the single cell uh, are using these uh, uh, methods. Um, this is just a, a cartoon to show you. If I take a K is one, I have these very, very rigid uh, uh, boundaries. K is two, as I said, for some points, things become a bit confusing because the, the two nearest neighbors or the five nearest neighbors might not be very conclusive. And the kernel kind of smooths this uh, boundary a little bit. So this boundary is like this one, but it's a lot smoother than, than before. 